Good afternoon, everyone. Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson joining us straight away this afternoon as a storm in the Northern Valley has already caused one tornado warning today. Hutch, what are you seeing now? Well, we still have thunderstorms working their way through the region. We have a huge area of low pressure that has brought the cooler air for many of us today, but we absolutely do still have some storms to be concerned about on this first alert weather day. Clouds up in the Northern Valley. Uh, mainly north of Grand Forks near the international borders where things are really hopping, but you can certainly see up to the north. Things are a little bit darker. It's been gusty as well. Let's get to the latest on the radar. First and foremost, those storms generally have been uh, non severe, but we do have a watch that's been issued until 10 o'clock tonight. Our far north and eastern counties, Roseau, Kitson, Lake of the Woods, Beltrami County under a severe thunderstorm watch. So the likelihood is there for severe thunderstorms, but because we have this watch this counterclockwise speed been working its way through the region. This is an area of low pressure and that low pressure is moving through. We have hot, humid air working its way up into the border counties and along that you can see all of the vivid lightning going on with it. Gusty west and northwest winds are bringing cooler and drier air into the rest of the region. Here's the active thunderstorms right now. They remain all non severe. However, we do have to let you know that they've been going over the same areas now for the last few hours since around the one o'clock hour. Flash flood warning in place here in the northern reaches of uh, the uh, Cavalier County area. So Wales, West Hope, there. Uh, near Langdon. Some thunderstorms continue. Rainfall estimates are over two inches in that area, and we have more storms that will be training and working their way through the region for the next few uh, or at least couple of hours. So flash flooding and the risk of severe weather really shifting only to our far northern and eastern counties. The rest of us garden variety thunder showers through the evening. Temperatures much cooler, but that cooler air uh, allowing the thunderstorms to take off tonight. So we'll keep our eyes on the skies. Keep an eye on your Valley News Live weather app and we'll have details on the return of warm weather and we'll let you know when the humidity returns here, Stacy, in a few more minutes. A few thunderstorms could be severe tonight. We'll let you know. All right, thanks so much. And as Hutch just mentioned, as we continue this storm coverage, it's a good idea to keep your VNL weather app handy. You can download and use it for free. Just search VNL weather in your app store. The North Dakota Securities Commissioner has ordered a Fargo-based investment firm, Jameson Capital Financial, and its president, Jeremy Carlson, to stop conducting business in the state. According to documents, they violated state securities laws, acting as an unregistered broker. Documents say the company deposited more than $17 million from clients and ordered wire transfers into Jameson and Carlson's bank accounts. Documents also allege Carlson paid himself and his firm at least $338 thousand dollars. Sixteen members of Congress were among 34 people arrested outside the Supreme Court today during a protest for abortion rights. Representative Ilhan Omar, a Democrat from Minnesota, was one of the people arrested. Police said on Twitter demonstrators were blocking the street and given three warnings before officers made arrests. Members of the House of Representatives are poised to vote on a bill that would protect same sex and interracial marriage. Natalie Brand reports from Washington. As abortion rights advocates and Democratic lawmakers continue to protest the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade, the House is voting on a bill to protect marriage equality out of fear the conservative high court could revisit other landmark decisions. It simply says each state will recognize the other state's marriages when and not deny a person the right to marry based on race gender, sexual orientation. Supporters of the Respect for Marriage Act note Justice Clarence Thomas's separate opinion suggested the court should reconsider past precedent, including same-sex marriage and access to contraception. But Republicans say the majority opinion did not go that far. This bill is simply the latest installment of the Democrats' campaign to delegitimize and attempt to intimidate the United States Supreme Court. Nearly one month since the Supreme Court's decision on abortion, patients and providers say they're navigating new restrictions and experiencing confusion depending on where they live. Physicians seeing ectopic pregnancies or patients with sepsis or hemorrhage during pregnancy are literally calling hospital attorneys who, in some cases, tell them to wait until there is a higher chance of death before intervening. During a House committee hearing Tuesday, lawmakers also heard from an OBGYN who opposes abortion. That instead of defaulting to abortion as a band-aid for a variety of complex issues, we will now be working to identify innovative solutions for women today, their preborn children, and for future generations. And while there's been bipartisan support expressed for family planning, 
House Democrats say they will put Republicans on the record later this week with a vote on guaranteeing access to contraceptive services. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Meanwhile, two Democratic senators introduced a bill to expand access to family planning services and birth control. Minnesota's medical cannabis program will soon offer more options to its patients. The Minnesota Department of Health announced that infused edibles like gummies or chews will be legal under the state's medical cannabis program starting August 1st. These are different from the recently authorized hemp-derived THC edibles. Officials are strongly recommending scheduling an appointment at a medical cannabis dispensary before the new law goes into effect per the guidelines of the state's medical cannabis program. The U.S. Navy's elite flight demonstration squadron has made a historic choice for its upcoming season. The Blue Angels announced the first female pilot will fly its fighter jet. Minnesota native Lieutenant Amanda Lee will take the controls with another pilot for the Angels' upcoming season. She'll need to complete an intensive five-month training program with the other new members of the team. While Lee is the first female fighter jet demonstration pilot, the Blue Angels say hundreds of female Navy service members and Marines have served with the team over the last 55 years. Take a look at this. Fire crews responded a short time ago to an apparent explosion at the Hoover Dam. A video shared on Twitter showed the fire. Crews are still trying to figure out how it started. The flames were extinguished by the Hoover Fire Brigade in about 30 minutes. No visitors or employees were hurt, and the Bureau says there's no risk to the power grid. Landscapers across the country are doing what they know best to preserve national landmarks. David Aid takes us to Washington, where volunteers from more than a handful of states are working at sites like the Lincoln Memorial. Hundreds of landscaping volunteers spent hours laying down this fresh soil and mulch around the Lincoln Memorial. They say it's their way of giving back to the nation. It doesn't cost the taxpayer a cent. It's all donated. Uh, we have uh, some of our suppliers that will donate materials as well as equipment. And then our volunteers come out and they do all the hard work. Britt Wood is the chief executive officer of the National Association of Landscape Professionals, a trade association that represents more than 100,000 people in the landscaping industry. He says this service project is a huge source of pride. What we're doing is carving out beds and laying down mulch, and that's designed to help protect the trees and bushes to make sure that they stay healthy, and that we keep a really beautiful looking memorial here. Mike Bogan is the CEO of Landcare, a nationwide landscaping company. He says Landcare employees from Arizona, California, Oklahoma, Texas, and Virginia travel to D.C. to volunteer in the service project. The ability to do work on these public spaces that are all part of the things that you see and experience when you're here on, on vacation with your family and you know how meaningful they are to others, it's really heartwarming to know that you've been able to do something to help beautify them. The group coordinated with the National Park Service, which is responsible for maintaining the memorial. Volunteers also worked on a project at Arlington National Cemetery. In Washington, I'm David Aid. In other news, the price of the pump is going down. That's according to a price reporting agency for AAA. Regular gas costs less than $4 a gallon at nearly one in five gas stations now in the U.S., with the cheapest gas in the southeast. Despite relief for some, AAA says the national average is still $4.52 a gallon. The drop in price can be attributed in part to fears of a global recession. Oil and gas futures have fallen, lowering the price of the pump. Heads up, you'll see a lot of police cars and fire trucks around City Hall tomorrow. City employees will take part in a violent intruder exercise between 3 and 4.30 p.m. If you're in the area, you'll hear loud noises and see first responders in full gear. But there's no threat to the public. During that time, Fargo City Hall will be closed. Tonight at Northern Cass School, local agencies are holding a joint active shooter training scenario. The Sheriff's Office expects a large presence of first responders and emergency vehicles all around the school from about 6 until 1030. We'll bring you much more on this tonight at 10.